the overall message from our research is that companies have to be intelligently conservative. That doesn't mean that companies that survive for more than a hundred years don't go through periods where the world around them is changing in very radical manners and they, as a consequence of that, have to adapt and change. But the companies that we studied that were particularly successful made these adaptations in a way that took their culture and tra their traditions into account. They changed in culturally sensitive ways. Let me highlight that by uh, telling the contrasting story of Siemens, our top company, and Allianz, our comparison company. In the post-war period, Siemens had to change for several reasons. First of all, they consisted of three separate businesses, three separate divisions, which, uh, if they would have stayed that way, were forced by a new law in Germany to disclose some information that was quite sensitive and they didn't want to make public. Secondly, the three different divisions were held together by a member of the Siemens family who was quite old and there was no obvious successor. And thirdly, the technology changes uh, that occurred in the period up to, uh, to then uh, made it difficult to keep the structure of the organization as it was. On the one hand, it led to duplications in research projects in the three different divisions. And on the other hand, they were occupied with both consumer and industrial oriented businesses that have started to grow apart and were different to cater for under the same roof. So Siemens really had to change. But the interesting and important part is that Siemens took 10 years to do so. The leadership consulted widely within the organization. When they actually brought the three different divisions under one roof, the new Siemens AEG, then they allowed these different divisions to still maintain a lot of their culture and traditions. And only in the following decades, slowly, did the company grow together. They've also decided, uh, in I guess a more radical way, to send the consumer-driven business into a joint venture with Bosch and concentrate more on the industrial-oriented businesses. So they didn't really shy away also from strong decisions if there was ample reasons to do so. AG, in a very different manner, conducted change. Like Siemens, uh, they really had to change, particularly as they were running into trouble by uh, having tried to tie themselves too closely to the revenue growth of Siemens without being as profitable. So in came Heine, a CEO who was very strong and who had strong ideas of how to change the company. His problem was is he didn't take the time to listen to people in the organization. He surrounded himself with yes-sayers, who were often referred to as Heine's sausages, Heine's Würstchen, as it's called in Germany, and were really mocked by the rest of the organization. The result of his plans was that a lot of the best performers, a lot of the talented managers in that company left frustrated. And he didn't really manage to change around. Eventually he had to leave. Uh, the company was uh, kind of uh, living on for uh, some extended period of time after that, but eventually being bought by Daimler and not being uh, able to save it really, even then the company was sent into bankruptcy. So a change process in a large organization really has to take into account the culture and traditions. If you like it or not, you have to work with it. You have to bring the organization on board if you want to change a large organization.